This is Hayes Q Jones. Get DVD and Blu ray baller on a budget, baby. And this is HQ videos for you. And right now I'm actually in line with my mother so she can actually get vaccinated for the COVID, COVID virus or pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Um, I myself I'm gonna wait before I get the shot when it comes available. It's just my choice. Uh, but for this week, I really plan on doing a, a pandemic Walmart video. But I don't know if you guys have been to Walmart lately, or, or at least my Walmart video section is almost non existent. So, kind of twist it up a little bit. It is February, it is Black History Month. And I think I'd be remiss not to do something for Black History Month. And so I chose to do some of the most impactful movies, black movies in my lifetime. And it's not a complete list, it's just the ones that actually kind of stick out or actually have physical copies of. What I mean impactful is it was something different in the movie that touched me either humorously or emotionally or socially. So if you're really not into black films, I'd appreciate if you just kind of stick around and you might find something that you've actually seen or maybe something you didn't even know existed and may, might actually broaden your horizon. So sit back, relax, have a drink, have a smoke, and I'll catch you on the other end of this video. And at the very end, I actually have some pickups I got from um, eBay and Amazon, some nice 3D uh, rare pickups. So again, sit back, relax, and I'll catch you on the other end. What you see here is just a, a short list of some of the most impactful pieces of black cinema in my lifetime. It's not a complete list. Um, there are a lot of other movies I haven't included in here. The Shaft movies, uh, Ice Cube Friday, the Dolomite movies. Uh, it's a whole laundry list, but just the ones that kind of really stuck out that really made an impact in my life. So sit back and uh, we'll go over these one by one. Hold on. I'm going to kick it off with Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It. Uh, this released from Island Pictures back in 1986 at Comedy Romance. Uh, this is a story of Nola Darling's simultaneous sexual relationships with three different men. It is told by her and her partners and other friends. All three men wanted her to commit solely to them. Nola resists being owned by a single partner. This for me was like the first time I actually acknowledged cinema kind of as, a, as an art and I've seen a uh, hundred pictures before this so but for me to see a black director a black cast with a, a black soundtrack um, Bill Lee his father did the soundtrack and it was just such a quirky movie it was all in black and white except for about maybe a five minute clip in the middle and it just really kind of blew me away as a again a piece of art and this kind of I, I think was a catalyst of me being a movie collector and maybe a movie lover Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It Cosmic Slop this is a 1994 HBO science fiction movie uh, in tradition of the Twilight Zone this bizarre, thought-provoking trilogy addresses the density of the world's minorities. Part one, a conservative African-American polit politician must choose between his people's survival and appeasing his white colleagues when space aliens propose to share their pro profound knowledge in exchange for all the black people on Earth. 
part two, the Virgin Mary's appearance in an inner city's housing project forced the Hispanic priests to face the hidden cultural origins of Western religion. Part three, on the dawn of the Black Revolution, an American couple who dis uh, discovers uh, discovers really what it is it like to be a black American. And this is a, it was also by George Clinton, who was, if you know who George Clinton is, he is an icon in music, uh, founder of the Parliament's Funkadelics. He hosted this. It's kind of a, a Twilight Zone type picture, but just the subject matter was so different. I've never seen anything like this to date. I don't even know if you can get this on DVD. You may be able to get this on VHS and laser there, so Cosmic Swap, if you get the opportunity, uh, take a look at it. You, you, it's very interesting. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Cosmic Swap. Richard Pryor Live in Concert. This is an MPI 1979 comedy documentary. Uh, Richard Pryor delivers monologues on race, sex, family, and his favorite target himself live at the Terrace Theater in Long Beach, California. And this is important, I believe. I, I probably started listening to Richard Pryor was maybe, I don't know, 12, 13. My homeboy and I used to go to his mom's room and listen to her comedy albums, uh, Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, Moms Mabley, um, Pig Feet. And, and that kind of gave me a foundation uh, of comedy. And to this day, I think Richard Pryor, Red Fox, George Carlin are probably the benchmarks of what I said comedians buy. And they're the ones that influence the ones I like today, such as Cat Williams and um, Dave Chappelle. So Richard Pryor live in concert embodies the pinnacle of stand-up comedy, in my opinion. Richard Pryor live in concert. We have Boomerang, 1992 Paramount Pictures, a comedy romance. Marcus is a successful advertising executive who woos and bears women almost at will. After a company merger, he finds that his new boss, the ravishing Jacqueline, is treating him exactly the same way. Completely traumatized by, by this, his work goes badly downhill. Uh, for me, this is probably one of the first movies I ever saw where they had a black leading character who was articulate, who was a professional, who was suave, that wasn't a pimp or a, a cop or it was just a, a working professional. And I think at one time I probably wanted to be Marcus Graham, just that fly with all the fly ladies around me and just, you know, just be that cool guy. So Eddie Murphy's Boomerang is just an, an excellent, excellent film, fantastic cast. You have Ursula Kitt, um, David Allen Greer, um, um, I'm looking at it right now. Grace Jones is just a fabulous cast, hilarious movie, one of the best comedy romances of all time. Eddie Murphy's Boomerang. Menace to Society. This is a new line home entertainment release back in 1993. Uh, sobering and incisive, this cautionary drama centers on a street tough 18 year old facing a moral quandary while trying to turn his life around. And this is the Hughes brothers. I'm not sure it's not. I always get the Hughes brothers and the Hutland brothers mixed up. The Hughes brothers. To me, this is like one of their greatest masterpieces. Um, fantastic cast. You have Jada Pinkett Smith. You have um, Lorenz Tate. Um, I always forget this guy's name here. Um, but he's actually Kane. Who is Kane? Tyron Turner. For some reason, his career just never really took off, though. Just a, a real gritty, I don't know, just a real, a real gritty inner city picture of uh, life in um, South Central, Minnesota Society. Passenger 57. This is a 1992 Warner Brothers action adventure crime movie and infamous terrorist has evaded capture for a long time by being extremely clever and ruthless. Things get interesting when he hijacks a plane carrying famous security expert John Cutter who isn't about to stand 
for any type of this shit. It does say type of shit. I added that. But my, my reason for liking this movie on the surface seemed very petty and superficial. But probably in the 80s, late 80s, it really seemed that light-skinned black men were like all the rave, especially in, in music and in television. You know, you had Blair Underwood, Morris Ch Chestnut, and, and Denzel, but they were like more the pretty boys. But you had like Prince, I'll Be Sure, um, DeBarge. That, that's why all the brothers love that movie, um, New Jack City, where he does um, I'll Be Sure, pretty motherfucker. That's why we like that, that part, though. But it seemed like when Wesley came on the scene, he brought blackness back. He brought that dark-skinned black brother back. And that seems kind of petty, though, but, you know, I'm not a pretty boy. I'm not, uh, what, what, what's the movie, um, I'm not a pretty man. But, you know, I'm not ugly either, though. Wesley brought that, that ruggedness back to, to the cinema. He kind of brought that shaftness back. And, and that's why I like shaftness. That's kind of a word, though. But he, he brought that, that masculinity back to black cinema for me. And that's why Passion 57. That's why I'm so passionate about that movie. We have another Paramount Pictures, 1989, comedy, crime, drama, romance, Harlem Nights. Sugar Ray is the owner of an illegal casino and must contend with the pressures of vicious gangsters and corrupt police who want to see him go out of business. In the world of organized crime and police corruption in the 1920s, any dashly trick is fair. And... This movie for me was just so classy, and, and the wardrobe, the the lineup, never before in my lifetime you saw three generations of iconic comedians, Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, um, Richard Pryor, who was influenced by Red Fox, and Eddie Murphy, who was influenced by Richard Pryor and Red Fox, all together, um, some of the, the best lines. Um, in this movie, um, Della Reese, I got a girl who <clears throat> is so good. If you throw it up in the air, it'll turn into sunshine. Stuff like that, just I iconic lines just will will resonate forever in, in, in cinema history. Harlem Nights. Hoop Dreams. This is a Criterion Voyager 1994 release, a documentary drama sports release. Everyday school day, African-American teenagers, William Gates and Arthur A.G. travel 90 minutes each way from inner city Chicago to St. Joseph High School in Westchester, Illinois, a predominantly white suburban school well known for the excellence of its basketball program. Gates and A.G. dream of NBA stardom and win the support of their close-knit families. They battle their social and physical obstacles that stand in their way. This acclaimed documentary was shot over the course of five years. Um, the first time I saw this, I think I just saw it on Laserdisc, and it is, in some parts, it's just heart-wrenching, because you have these, they're kids, they're teenagers, but essentially they're kids putting their whole life into all their hopes and aspirations into one thing, basketball. It just go. It goes over five years, and it, I'm not gonna give uh, the plot away if you haven't seen it. So, but it just it tells you what happens, and it shows you the interactions of their family and their influences. And when you look at some of the professional athletes today, and you wonder why they do some of the things they do, this might give you some insight to that hoop dream. So. Fantastic documentary, probably one of the best, best documentaries I've ever seen in my life. Who dreams? Boys in the Hood, a Columbia Tri Star 1991 action crime drama. Boys in the Hood is a popular and successful film and social criticism from John Singleton about the conditions in South Central Los Angeles, where teenagers are involved in gunfights and drug dealing on a daily basis. And if you can actually read the title, you can just off the rip just see us loaded with talent from Cuba Gooden Jr., Morris Chestnut, Chestnut uh, the beautiful Neil Long, and Angela Bassett, and Larry Fishburne. This is probably, well, 
I really noticed Larry Fishburne the first time in a movie called School Days by Spike Lee. But he really kind of shined as Furious Styles with a name like Furious Styles. You gotta be a bad motherfucker to, just to, to carry off that name. Uh, that's where he really stood out for me. And Ice Cube also has a serious actor. Uh, before this, uh, I'm not sure if this is before Friday or after Friday. I don't know off the hand, but this is kind of his first serious role. And I, I think he put it off, uh, did, did a, a decent job. But from the soundtrack to the acting, just to the, the directing, uh, God rest, rest in peace, John Singleton, uh, one of the most impactful movies of my life, Boys in the Hood. Deep Cover. This is a New Line Home Entertainment 1992 action crime mystery thriller. The black policeman Russell Stevens applies for a special anti-drug squad which targets the highest boss of cocaine delivery to LA, the Colombian foreign minister's nephew. Russell works his way up from the bottom undercover until he reaches the boss. The first step is to get the lawyer and hobby and hobby dealer, David James, Jason, to trust him. Um, just along with the same lines of boy, Boys to Men, Lawrence Fishburne just really did it for me in this movie. Um, first of all, if you don't know anything about Lawrence Fishburne, he's a thespian. Uh, he's done Shakespeare. I remember reading a story about him doing a, a Shakespeare play and someone in the audience having their cell phone go off and him going off on him, stopping the play and going off about him going off in the, in the, uh, in the audience. So he's serious about his acting. And he just brings the, the type of regalness to his roles, just on how he carries himself, um, his voice, his, 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 his cadence. He, he and Denzel, you know, they're definitely the alpha males, but they're, they're totally different actors. Um, Denzel is a little bit more, a little bit more laid back. Lawrence is a little bit more intense. And that's what I like about him. He's different. And if you've seen this movie, you know that that one scene where the white detective is interviewing all these black um, black um, potential undercover agents, and he asks them that question, and just how smooth he delivers that answer is is one of the pinnacles or one of the high points of that movie. Deep Cover, Blade. A 1989 Amon Ra Films action horror science release. When Blade's mother was bitten by a vampire during pregnancy, she didn't know she didn't know that she gave her son a special gift while dying. All the good vampires attributes in combination with the best human skills. Blade and his mentor battle the evil vampire rebel who plans to take the outdated vampire council, capture Blade, and resurrect a voracious blood god this Marvel release in my opinion changed the look of, of superheroes prior to Blade and I was actually did a little research before I, before I did this I looked at the Batman releases the Michael Keaton um, George Clooney uh, the Christopher Reeve releases and prior to this they all kind of had the tights the 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 classic 70s kind of superhero Blade kind of brought them into the 20th 21st century with the kind of armored combat look with the the, the vibration and in, in, in the bass when in his movements to me the Avengers, Marvel's, DC look kind of started from Blade. And actually, he's not the first black superhero. I looked that up too. There are quite a few before him. He had To Kill O'Neill and Steel, which eh, was an okay movie. He had Michael J. Wa Michael J. White in Spawn. He actually had Robert Townsend in Meteor Man. And I think there were a couple other ones also. But the ones that I think that was just the funkiest, that was just the coolest, one of the best opening scenes of all times to me, I put this up there with Indiana Jones as far as opening scenes, you gotta give it to Wesley Snipes and Blade. 
Black Panther, a 2018 Marvel Studios action adventure science fiction release. King T'Challa returns home from America to be the reclusive technology advanced African nation of Wakanda to serve as the country's new leader. However, T'Challa soon finds he is challenged for, for the throne by factions within his own country as well as without. Using powers reserved to Wakanda's kings, T'Challa assumes the Black Panther ma mantle to join his girlfriend Nakia, the Queen Mother, his Princess Kid sister, members of the Dora, and I'm going to kill this last name, Malaji, the Wakanda Special Forces, and an American secret agent to prevent Wakanda from being dragged into a world war. World war. And for me, being a, a middle-aged man, having a, a kid, this is a big deal. And I'm not going to get into all the social aspects of it. Just to have your kid to go to the movie, see a major million dollar motion picture, and see the hero look like him is a big deal and if, if that's not a big deal you probably just, just don't understand a fantastic masterpiece of a film uh, rest in peace Chad Bozeman um, just the lineup everything about this movie um, was fantastic even the villain much like in uh, the man of steel in the man of steel I actually like Zod better than I like Superman in Black Panther, I actually like Kill, Killmonger more than I like Black Panther. But nevertheless, this is a fantastic movie and was very impactful, not just for me, but for my family. Panther, a 1995 polygram drama. Panther is a semi-historic film about the origin of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. The movie spans over three years, 1966 through 68 of the Black Panther's history in Oakland. Panther also uses historical footage, black and white, to emphasize some points. And this is actually a masterpiece by Mario Van Peebles. I know I give him a lot of shit because he plays Sonny Spoon. Um, he made Posse and Solo. So I think sometimes he's, he really kind of feels himself. But then you have to look at pieces of work like New Jack City and Panther. And to, the, to date, and if anyone knows otherwise, please leave in the comment. I don't think there's been another major motion picture about the Black Panthers. There's been some documentaries. But I, I think now, just recently, the past few years, they're coming up with individuals, stories about the individual of the Black Panthers. But um, that was a fantastic movie, a great soundtrack, very interesting. The DVD is out of print. And never got a blu-ray release and probably i don't know if it ever will but very impactful movie haven't watched this in a while um just one of those things you kind of have for me i have to kind of be in that mindset to watch though uh panther by mario van peoples malcolm x a 1992 warner brothers biography drama history a tribute to the controversial black activist and leader of the struggle for the black liberation he had bottomed during, the, during his imprisonment in the 1950s. He became a black Muslim and the leader in the Nation of Islam. His assassination in 1965 with a legacy of self-determination and racial pride. And I briefly touched upon Malcolm in the Regina King movie, um, One Night in Miami. Um, what's incredible about Denzel in this movie he doesn't really look like Malcolm. Malcolm is a couple shades lighter than he is. He actually has red hair. But his ability to embody Malcolm is, is uncanny. It's, it's, he, this is the movie he should have got the Academy Award for. But as you saw an um, interview on Spike Lee about him making Malcolm X, and he was making, making this like what was he thinking of what kind of film was he looking at? was he did he want this to be and he said he wanted to be this epic type of film along the lines of Lawrence of Arabia and 
I've yet to watch Lawrence of Arabia, one of the planet movies I plan on seeing though. But this is an epic, epic film. And is this if you've seen and heard Malcolm X and watched this, you will swear Denzel is Malcolm X. It's a powerful story. And just one of those one of those movies after you see it just it just really makes you think um, about what's going on in the times and specifically what's going on uh, with black Americans then and now Malcolm X and to run off the list and yes I know I'm cheating a little bit this is not a movie per se it's a television miniseries but this without a doubt had the most impact on me more than anything else uh, this is Roots the 1978 Warner Brothers drama history war release television miniseries a saga of African American life based on Alec Haley's famous his family history Kuta Kinte is abducted from his Afri African village sold into slavery and taken to America throughout the series the family observed notable events in the US history such as the Revolutionary War and civil wars, slave uprisings, and emancipation. And in my opinion, if you're an American citizen, if you're an immigrant trying to become an American citizen, this should be required watching for everyone. Um, throughout my life, I was forced to listen to other history that I wasn't necessarily wanted to hear, but I sat through it and I actually learned something, and it was actually interesting. And in order to understand a group, an individual, I think to a certain understanding, you have to know where they're coming from or know a little bit about their history. And if you sat through all this and you're not a a fan of, of black movies. Thank you very much. I appreciate that because for so many years I was forced to listen to history. That I didn't want to. You did this on your own will. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for, for sitting through this and listening to this. So without further ado, let's get to some of the movies I picked up. Hold on. We are back at the Black Cave and I just have a collection of things that I purchased either off of eBay or Amazon. Um, as much as I love getting deals at Dollar Tree and the pawn shop, some stuff you just very unlikely, more than likely, you're not gonna find there. So I do kind of surf the net, Amazon and eBay, trying to find the best deals. And it's mostly 3D, 3D stuff, like rare 3D stuff. So let me get these scanned in, and I'll go over these in just a minute. Okay, everything scanned in into my C L Z Movies app. And that's season Charlie, L's in Lima, season Zebra. And just 12 titles, so but let's get into it. The first one is an Asylum release, A Haunting in Salem, based on true events in 3D. And most of these are gonna be 3D. I'm finding out as time progresses, a lot of these are going out of print. And I, I really don't know if they're gonna be making these anymore since there seems to be somewhat of a decline. Well, I know they stopped making 3D televisions and 3D um, uh, Blu-ray players. But we're going to start with an Asylum release, A Haunting in Salem, based on true events in 3D. And most of these, most of these you guys find that they are 3D uh, releases, I'm finding out that a lot of these 3D movies are going out of print and I'm not sure if they're going to ever come back since they stopped making 3D televisions and 3D Blu-ray players. Uh, a lot of the projectors are, I'm finding out are 3D, 3D ready or 3D uh, accessible. So I'm hoping that you know 3D movies will keep coming out. If not, I already have them so I'm covered. But this is a Salem and a Haunting Salem in 3D. And if you see that, that is an Asylum release. Or you see the Asylum logo right there. Next one is Enchanted Kingdom in 3D. 
and this is narrated by Idris Elba. And I love my BBC nature films. They're usually just, they're filmed very well, just as far as the color and just the overall look of it in 3D. They're even better. So, looking forward to watching this Enchanted Kingdom. Next, we have one I've seen online for years, and again, I'm just starting to pick them up because this can go anywhere from I think like seven bucks up to like 50 bucks. And when they're gone, I'm sure they're going to be gone. So I decided to get it at a reasonable price. Cave of a cave of forgotten dreams, and I think this is um, kind of a documentary. People on coal miners or cave dwellers, something something of that nature. Cave Dreams release this. It's a Sundance Select, an IFC release, I believe. I'm not sure. If you know, leave it, leave a note in the comment section, please. And this is Chinese Connection, um, Chinese Zodiac, Armor of God. And it's weird how they named some of these. Jackie Chan movies because some actually have two or three titles um, Armor of God or Chinese Zodiac and I think it might be called something else but this also I saw all over the place as far as pricing but I think I did get to like for 10 for 15 bucks but it took I think like a month and a half to get here I still have a couple more that I ordered back in December that still haven't gotten here yet Jackie Chan, Chinese Zodiac, Armor of God 3. Next one is not a 3D, but it's actually a Blu-ray. And to complete the Aladdin trilogy, at least as far as the cartoons are concerned, Aladdin, Aladdin, King of Thieves, and uh, The Return of Jafar. I got this at a great price at Amazon. Here anybody in the background, it's my wife, she's still working from home, and that's the DVD of Jafar, Return of Jafar, and Aladdin King of King of Thieves, and Return of Jafar and King of Thieves on the Blu ray, and hopefully, this still works. And you also have the very nice slip cover, also. Now, I know we get a lot of flack for these two right here. Not for this one, uh, but for that one right there. This actually came as a, a two for one, two for thirty dollars. I'm sure, sure. Yeah, this came. It really did. And I'm sure some of you like really dirty-minded people are like, don't you? Don't you have like a VR that you can watch a little dirty, smutty stuff? They're like, would be very disgusting, low-minded people. I can only dignify that answer with, yes, you can. But anyway. This is 3D. I won't go over that too much. Uh, this is, I've never seen this movie before, um, Hangover Girls, but I think it has another title, Best Night Ever. And I've never heard of this. I've only seen one copy of this, and I got it. At, again, it was a two for one. Same thing on the back. over for girls the next is the ultimate 3d nature collection safari rainforest and cane totes and again also get this got this for a very reasonable price called three at the safari 3d and I did just a quick glance at them very beautiful pictures great Cinematography. King Toads. And this is a, a foreign company, Kaleidoscope, so I'm really not familiar with the company or the distribution. And we have Rainforest 3D. And it comes with a nice, 
nice little box cover right there that can fold up. Next, we have a shout release. And I know this on Hamilton is like $15. I think I would get it a little bit less than that on eBay. Uh, Angela Bassett, the beautiful, gorgeous Angela Bassett and James Spader and Supernova, a sci-fi thriller. And this is a screen release. I believe this is out of print or going out of print, something to that effect. And to cap it off for Black History Month, you have the cornerstone and the black exploitation films, Superfly. If you want to get a start on, if you're unfamiliar with black exploitation films, this is probably a great place to start. Superfly or Shaft, that's what I would recommend. But this is just uh, pretty much like eBay, Amazon collection over the past three or four months. This stuff's taken a long time to get in. But you know the drill. Let me put this stuff where it belongs. And I'll let you guys get where you have to go. Hold on. Okay, I have everything laid out. Ready to go back in its proper place. As usual, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Ring the bell so you can get a notification every week. Hit the subscribe button. doesn't hurt. And you'll help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Uh, share with your, uh, anyone who's interested in movies, uh, interested in collecting movies. If nothing else, give me the big thumbs up. Other than that, may the best of your past be the worst of your future. Peace.